Let's see if this thing's on. Hello, hello. We're a minute late. We're a minute late. Sorry, folks. We're well, a minute late. Recording. Oh, are we recording? I think. I yeah, okay. We got to make sure we're recording. Yeah, we just talk about what we're going to do for lunch and dinner. I was telling Dan pie that, pie. that we going to want to do a chicken pot pie, pie soup tonight on this cold, dreary Sunday morning in Omaha, Nebraska. You know, what's up with that? You ever think about going back to Florida to live? I do. Uh, yeah, every day, especially this time of year. <laughs> You know, I always start told my kids to say, you know, once you graduate from high school, then the old 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 old, old Tommy's gonna move back to, to Florida. So I got seven. So my plan is seven, eight years. I'll be back in Florida. I know a lot of people. Yeah. Don't, no, a lot of people don't want to hear that. But you know, they say, well, you still your kids are still gonna be still be here. I say, well, one will be graduating from college, and the other one will be going to college. I say, well, don't you think they want a spring break or come visit me in, in in Florida when they can? You know. So, but you know, things can change. But my plans are in eight years to be back in Florida. Eight years, so eh, well. Yep, eight eight I, years. I'm the same thing. I wouldn't leave. I was well, born and raised here, but we wouldn't leave it because of uh, my oldest daughter, because she was here. Well, yeah, right. But you also got your grandkids here. Yeah, but they're moving. Where are they going to? They're moving to South Carolina. Really? So he, yeah, he did four years in the Air Force, and then uh, he got out, did the reserves, and then he reenlisted for six more years. So he's now going. He's being stationed in South Carolina. So they're moving. Wow. So they're taking the grandkids with him. Yep. Yep, moving south. Grandpa, the Grandpa Dan can't see the grandkids. Now you got, now you got to go travel. south. Now you got to go go southeast for the winter. Huh? They're like within six hours of everything. Washington, Disney World, like they're right in the middle. Atlanta. Well, well I don't know if they're Disney World. So, uh, Disney World is six and a half hours really? from where they're at. Yeah, I, I looked a little farther than that. I looked at Washington's actually seven, but I think we're live. Can you guys hear us? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I thought maybe it's a little bit farther than that. Make sure you, the audio's okay. Yeah, but but so so we both had a wild night last night, didn't we? You know, both of our kids went to homecoming. Oh yeah, homecoming night. Yeah, it was homecoming. Middle West had their homecoming. And, it's and stressful. Let me. Know, well, well, stressful you because you have a daughter. That's exactly what I was going to get to. <laughs> you have a daughter. You I have, call I have, it whatever you want. Boy. Call it whatever you want. It might be sexist, but it's true. No, it, it is. It is true. It I, is it, definitely true. You know, my son, his son got him uh, help him get ready. You know, trying to teach him how to tie a tie, a real tie, and he's like, "Dad, I need your help." So I helped him, and he's like, "Dad, that's sharp." I said, "One day I'm going to sit you down and teach you how to do this." And he invited one of his friends, and she said yes. So they had a good time, and then he calls me. He texts me like at 11.30. He said, Dad, do you mind if I go to a couple of my friends' house for a couple hours just to hang out because everybody's going yeah. back there? I'm yeah. like, sure. Let me keep in mind now, you know, me trying to be the responsible dad, trying to wait up for him until he got home. I think like 2, 2.30, he finally walks in the door, and I'm like, you okay? Like, yep. Yeah. I was like, all right, good night. You know, yeah. so, so, you know, that's what parenthood comes when you have a teenager. It's interesting because my daughter called us at like 1130 and she was going to stay out longer. And I, I had to walk away. I can't uh-huh. make that decision because <laughs> she should have no. been home at nine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Cause if it was my son, I would have been like, all right, yeah, I'll yeah, see you in the morning. That, that, that's what I, that's what I, I'm it's like, weird. Like, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Just let me know. Just be safe and just let me know right. you get yeah. home and. And so just one of those deals, you have a different We mindset. realize, I think, well, as a father, especially at this age, and we've been around, we realize the dangers to women out there, especially little girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's well, a danger. I mean, there's danger to boys, too, but let's, let's, it's not the same. You, you protect your daughters more than you do your Absolutely. boys. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you, you know every, every, guy, every guy who has a son out there, a teenage son or adult son, or always say, you know, you let you want your boys to make them make those mistakes that you made, so they learn from them. When you your daughter, you try yeah. to know and protect her as much as I can. Just keep I, away from all the bad boys and the bad things out there's there. There's a funny bit. Joe Rogan has a brand new uh, comedy special out on Netflix, and I just watched it. And he does this whole bit uh-huh. about uh, uh, sons and daughters and how that they, we they're treated differently. And I, I won't go into the the language a little rough, but it's pretty damn funny. Uh, but it's you, true. It's, it's true. true. I, I look at do it with my own kids. I treat my son totally different than I treat my daughter. And, yep. and and it's not that I'm purposely doing it, but you know, it's always they all, you know, my parents always told me say, your son's gonna be like like his mother and your daughter's gonna be you. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's one hundred percent true. Yeah. My my daughter's my meeting me and my son. My son is, is, is he's a good kid, very smart kid. He's kind of a shy kid. He he likes to be at home all the time, but when he goes out with his friends, you know, I allow him to because yeah. I don't want him to be a hermit his whole life. You know, I'm a homebody, but I still try to get out in the public once and uh, once and once here and there you are kind of a homebody aren't you oh i love being at home you can't get in trouble when you're at home yeah well that's true too you know if i want to have a drink i can have one at home i don't have to worry about nobody coming and drinking and driving or anything like that <sighs> i would have had a few drinks after last night i actually had a couple drinks i usually don't but i did oh what, what happened did. last night well first of all there was a great usc fight yeah i thought we was gonna talk about that at the end Oh, we can save it. Let's say that's what it is. All right, let's talk about USC because I love love that. You know, let's end on a positive note. You know, I I, we should have picked Houston's brain for that one. 
We should have set it up and had Houston just for that fight. Like just to talk about some of these big USC fights would have been good, but we'll say that. Yeah, we'll say that for last. So we are live. This is Tommy Frazier's Husky Nation. I'm Dan Powers, and this is Tommy Frazier. And we got Justin and Blake and Tom and Carl. Wake There's up, people. people. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It's Sunday morning at 11 o'clock in, 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 in Midwest. So I know it's 12 o'clock on the East Coast and 9 o'clock on the West Coast. So get on up. Yeah. Put your questions in if you got questions. I'm curious what everybody thinks because I've seen a lot of posts this morning because there was a game last night. There was a game last night. The Big Red played the Big Red. And the Big Red won. And yeah. The real, the, the true Big Red. The, the, yeah. And I'm not talking about Nebraska and people are going to smash before that, but right now, Wisconsin is the true Big Red. They've beaten Nebraska, what, seven times, six wow, straight they, times? They've owned times. us. They've owned us. They've owned us. You know, so. What's remarkable about that program, I don't think they get enough credit. Maybe they do. They don't. They've gone through coach after coach after coach. They've gone through, I think, three coaches in the last, what, seven or eight years? Guess, but, but Barry Alvarez but that, has that, that system. I, I was just going to say that. He, wow. he's, he's, just, he's, the, he's the main piece of that puzzle. Wow. And, and people don't know. They realize this. To know that when he, every coach that he hires, he tells them what system they're going to run. He's going to run that, that off system that, that built a program to maintain him when he was there. And so when you look at Brett B- B- Billima, he basically told Brett, "You're gonna run the same form, same system," and Brett had success. Yeah. Then he told Gary Anderson, yeah, who came, I think, it was Utah State, who like that showed a spread, a spread offense. And, to, and after the first yeah. year, Gary Anderson said, "No, I'm running my offense." That's he right. said, "No, you will not run. Then you're gonna stick with what we do here at Wisconsin." Yeah. And Gary Anderson what left, left. Went to Oregon State, now got a job, and then you bring in Paul Chris, who was offensive coordinator. Yep. Up under, up under, was it um, uh, uh, Bilima, Bil- Billimore? Yeah, and then I he was. It, I think then he was with Paul Chris, and then he got he a head go, job at Pitt. Then Pitt, right? Head, and, and, yeah, and I yeah, think it was at Pitt yeah. for two years. Didn't have, didn't really do well at Pitt, but people saw, and he yeah. he understood the offense that Barry wanted to run, and it's look in, what, and look what's happening. It's interesting because you don't. Yeah, it's. Uh, is there any other program out there like this? Well, I'll say Alabama. This, when we talk about their system that they yeah, do, but I mean that it's ran. I, I'm talking about like is it. Any other place where it's ran by the athletic director like this, where he oh. says, "Hey, we're already de- we've defined what we're going to run. We just need the no, coach to run it." No, 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 no. I was I was going to think say say Ohio State, but Ohio State been through so many changes with their yeah. AD with, with their AD changing head coaches, and you know, so no. But look, but Barry Alvarez, he has his finger on that program, and because he understands that in order for Wisconsin athletics to be successful, this football program has to maintain. It's, 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 it's status right now, and yeah. they're doing a, they're doing a hell of a job of what they're doing up there, and I commend them for them. And and Nebraska right now, we need to sit back and say we need to be like them. What? How can we get that? Before it was Wisconsin modeling themselves out of Nebraska. Now Nebraska needs to start modeling themselves out of Wisconsin yeah. because they're doing it the right way and they're they're sustaining the longevity. Because if you go back to when Barry, what well, they say, nineteen ninety one, nineteen ninety two, when Barry somewhere back when he got the job, he was one in ten his first year, then yeah. five and seven, five and seven, and that's when he started going to the Rose Bowls. Yeah. You know, by doing, by sticking to the gun, doing the same thing, doing the power run game, doing the play action pass, stuff like that, which which leads me to all these schools are going to the spread offense. You don't need that to win championships. You don't need that to win a lot of games. You don't need that to be dominant. Yeah. And and, and two schools I can think of right off the bat that are being dominant: Wisconsin, Alabama. Wisconsin, Alabama. They're not in that spread offense. They're up in the hand ball, fullback, running back, Duh. and being dominant. Uh. It's interesting. The fullback has almost disappeared in many ways, but Wisconsin. I wish we, I wish we had a fullback like they have. Wow, he looked good last night. Or, you, or and, and the thing about it, they weren't even their best player. They normally have a tight end doing that, but he was injured. He looked good. Yes. Let me see. I need to pull up the stats. Well, too. I got them right here. You, you got stats? Oh yeah, we talk about over three hundred yards rushing. Yeah, I seen over three hundred yards rushing. And what? oh wait a minute, well, who's uh, well, I'm gonna start calling him um, um, Taylor, the Nebraska Slayer. Taylor, think yeah. about that. He's rushed for over four hundred, almost five hundred yards in the last two games against Nebraska. Str- yeah, Un- unstoppable. Yeah, so so. But every running back for Wisconsin has been. It goes back to their system, I guess, or maybe the line. It's the system. They, every running back they put back there runs for what? Melvin Gordon had four hundred six yards one year. You had another guy had two hundred six some yards one year. You had a guy two hundred eight yards. You have Taylor James. There's James Taylor. He has two hundred two hundred forty nine last year. Two hundred sixteen this year. What is going on? Well, why can't we stop the run? Why can't Why can't we establish a run consistently? <laughs> That's another story in itself. Uh, Carl says he thought the team played hard yesterday. I'm so sick and tired of people saying the oh, team playing hard. I'm so glad you moral said that. Moral victories don't get you anywhere in college football. I love it. You think Coach Frost like moral victories? No. People stop saying we play hard. Did they play hard? Yes, they're supposed to play hard. 
But are they still beating themselves? Yes, you're not supposed to beat yourself. So stop saying we played. They played hard. You're supposed to play hard. I'm glad you said that because I, I got into a couple of Facebook uh, argument chat arguments this morning, just this morning, because people are still hung up on a. Hey, it's going to be all right. Well, it is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. But you 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 but, want them to go out every game and play hard no matter what. Everybody says okay next year, next year, the year after. We're not well, talking about next year. We're talking I might about be this dead year. next year. We're talking about this year. Yeah. And I heard the other line I heard that drives me also crazy is, well, at least we haven't heard this the last couple of weeks, but this morning I seen, hey, I saw improvements. I saw improvements. Here's my feedback, and I'll, I'll let you comment on this, but people, like, they scored a couple of touchdowns. They were moving the ball. We did that in Colorado. Moral yeah. victories again. Yeah. We can't execute in the red zone. More victories. People, get off this moral victory crap. I, I, I guarantee those coaches, coaches aren't happy with moral victories. No, Scott Frost looked like he was – Devastated. He looked like he was heartbroken. Yes. So, so as fans, you 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 we, we, you set yourself to well more victory, more victory, more victory. Well, we look better, look better. Well, every team out there can pull out a more victory that lost. You think Oklahoma's happy with it? They lost yesterday, but hey, they fought back, man. Twenty one down. That's a more victory. They didn't yeah. give up. They played hard to the end. People, Oklahoma fans aren't saying, well, they played hard. They lost. So I'm tired of people saying, well, they play hard. They play. It's a sport. They're supposed to play hard. Come on. Stop. Stop it with that. Adrian Martinez, though. I mean, 385 or 384 yards passing. Doesn't matter to me if you can't put points on the board. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, he's putting up your – although, I'm not – I know where you're going. Go ahead. I'm not very imp- – I – I'm going to go out on the limb and say that Martinez is not our starting quarterback next year. I think he is. And I know that takes a lot to replace him, but he's not He's not very – and I know the offensive line is not there. He's had so many opportunities to connect that he's overthrown. I, and I, 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 I knew you were going and, down that road. And, and I, the other thing I've heard, just and then I'll let you go, okay. is everybody says, hey, he's a freshman. He's a freshman. You told me, though, even though freshmen make starters, he still won the winning position. Whether you're a freshman or a senior, there's a certain expectation if you're going to lead the team. Right. There, there is a, a certain expectation if you're going to win a team. And, and I see potential in this kid. Okay? I do. But there's a lot of things that have to fall into place for everyone to see it. First of all, you have a true freshman starting at quarterback – but you have an offensive line who's not playing very well at all, okay? Because there were times in that game to where I saw him drop back in the pocket and he and he he automatically take off stars breaking breaking containment. Why? Because he's not comfortable. He's not trusting his offensive line going to protect him. To where there's times in that game if he was just sat in the pocket a little bit longer, he wouldn't have taken a lot of the hits that he's taking. Okay, but what I, I do see a kid who's fighting. I do see a quarterback who's out there trying to do, trying to make something happen. Now, is he going to make those mistakes? Of course, because when you when you talk about a freshman quarterback, and you're talking about the different schemes that he's facing and coaches, and, and they're sending blitzes from here and there, and you don't have an offensive line who can pick up. Last night, a simple blitz to where a defensive tackle goes into the A gap and the linebacker comes in the B gap, and you got two offensive linemen blocking one. Oh, wait a minute, guy, and, and it's sacks. That stuff right there has a lot to do with how well a quarterback plays as well. Does, does he make some bonehead throws? Yes. Does he make some bonehead like throwing a ball back across the street? Yes. But as Coach Frost said, you're going to get some of that out of, out of a freshman quarterback. Keep in mind, people, this, he had, this is his first time playing yeah. in two years. And you leave him in high school, you play junior year, don't play a senior, come to the Big Ten, one of the best conferences out there, and you play. I, I see potential there. But he needs help up front, and he's just not getting it. Well, I hope you're right. I'm struggling. I just think of the Big Ten at this level, Power Five Conference. He does. It's not that I don't think he's talented or anything like that. I just don't think he – you know, that the special quarterback, there's those quarterbacks out there that have a little – now, I'm going to say two things, and I'm probably I'm going to contradict myself, but they have that spark, mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, this is our mm-hmm. guy. So do you think Hornerbrook is a, is a big-time quarterback for the Big Ten? Well, that's where I was also going to flip and say on the other side with a, with a solid system, and we don't you – know, so that's where I struggle. So, so no, that, you're that, right. So that's, what, that's, so that's what I look at. Yeah. I look at he has a potential. Yeah. If, he had, if he was playing behind the offensive line that Ohio State has, okay, or playing behind the offensive line – 
that 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 Iowa has because mm-hmm. Iowa has a pretty good offensive line right now too. You'll be saying something totally different, but but when you have an offensive line who's not protecting, not run blocking, you have a true freshman quarterback out there, and he's somebody like, why 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 is, why is it? you you see that it's tough, but but. I think he has an opportunity. I think he has a chance now. Do I think he – do I think if Nebraska doesn't do better recruiting off as a lineman, will he be one of those quarterbacks that go down as one of the best in Nebraska history? Probably not because, as they say, if you're not winning, if this guy's not winning while you stick with it, go find someone who can get the job done. Yeah. Yeah. But right now, right now, from what I see, I think he has the potential to be in a very good quarterback here. But they need to surround him with better linemen. And, 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 and I'm going to say this. Better, better running backs. Yeah, I okay. wouldn't argue with that. Better running backs. Mo Washington showed me something last night, but still, the simple fact is he's a freshman too. You you can't have just one. You need you need multiple ones. Well, and how many go back through history and all the freshman running backs that have shined and then fell off for one reason or another, injury or yeah, like, because they, because they, they wear them down, they get beat up, wore down. Yeah. You know, you, people always say, well, Amon Green was a true freshman. Yeah, but Amon didn't have to start right away. Okay? He did, and, yeah. and, and Amon was number four before he took over. And once Amon got the job, he ran, he ran with it. Yeah. But we still didn't do everything with Amon. And Amon will tell you that. He made fresh mistakes. We do seem to wear down these these running backs pretty easily. And yes. So we didn't even talk about it. But what do you, the whole concept of the. It, We'll come back to the game, but the whole Lindsey leaving, Bell leaving. What's your thoughts on all these guys leaving? And you know what? Your take uh, on it? And- you know what? The, to me, that's the nature of college sports over the last 10, 15 years. To where kids get there and they get in their feelings because they're not. They're, to me, it's kids who don't want to compete. Yeah. And this and this four game trend red, red shirt deal, or you can play up the four game. It's going to cause more problems in college football. And I told you from day one, I didn't like this rule. Yeah. I didn't like this room. Because look what's happening. You're having guys playing three games. If a coach truly want to have it out for a kid, he'll play in five games and say, okay, now do what? You can't go anywhere. Yeah. Right? Like like Clemson could have started Kelly Bryant to the fifth game and then said, you know, we're changing quarterbacks. So it's kids who don't want to compete. And that, that bothers me. What happened going back to the old – going back to the old days, the only time a kid left school when he realized, you know what? This guy's not going away. I got. I, I can see. It. But when you have an opportunity in your hand. You 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 earned a starting job. Come out of the fall camp. Yeah. And your name is dropped on the depth chart because you're not performing. You and you're gonna leave because of that. What happens to competition? Compete and get get your job back. And Tajon Lindsey, you know, he's a kid to come out of, come out of high school, a four star, five star kid, had all the potential in the world. What has he done? You know, last the last thing I remember him up for is that that muff punt in Michigan. Yeah. And you wonder why you're not on the field because of you make them you you have what fifteen catches in your two years you've been here for ninety some yards, something's wrong with that pitcher. Yep. So those those two kids right there showed me they don't want to compete. Jebby, I don't have a problem with Jebby leaving. Why? Because he left before the season even started. I don't have a problem with that. But don't play three or four games, two or three games, and say you know what I'm leaving now. I'm not happy. I'm transferring. Yeah. Those are two kids that don't want to compete, and and, and I'm gonna say it because I, I I I'm I'm tired. I'm seeing it more and more, and th- that rule is gonna hurt college football even more. Yeah, Christy just said, "What happened to the kids earning their spots?" Well, that's what we're talking it's about. Di- it's huh? different kids these days. Social media yeah. builds them up. What's well, interesting? A lot of the Cal- these California kids, right? They, that they, 2017 they, 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 class. What, 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 it's not even California kids. No, it's, but it just happens to be uh, here. You see, I'm not going to say California. I'm saying I'm going to say more west, west yeah. of of Nebraska, well, west but, of Nebraska. Yeah, that you're starting to see this kind of stuff. I don't see it as much from kids from the Midwest, South, South, yeah, that's East Coast. Yeah. Unless you talk about Avery. I think Avery Roberts was the one, but yeah. but once again, he saw the writing on the wall. He's a four star well, guy. He know he yeah. ain't done anything. He played with two coaches. And both coaches say, hey, you need to do this, do this. Bam. You know, perfect example of a kid who's fighting for competition, Mo Berry. The first yeah. two years of Mo Berry's year, I'm like, who's this kid? Why is he even here? <laughs> now, the defense won't be the same without him. So it's all about competing, competition. Competition is supposed to make team better. That's what Nebraska all had in the, in, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and in, in the early 2000s. Yeah. That's what Alabama has. Alabama has four and five, or forty-two, four and five star players on their team roster right now. You think those guys are leaving? No. Why would they? 
because they know, hey, we're going to win. Yeah. And if I if I compete, I'm going to get in the game because guys are going to hurt. And once, once I get out, then I'm going to show what I can do. These kids today here in Nebraska are too sensitive. They're in their feelings. Get out to the and compete for a job. If you want to get in the field, then compete. What's pretty cool about it is, uh, or at least the way I read this, everybody's hung up on Bell leaving. And um, I believe the culture's changing. And now that we're this far into the season and people are still leaving, why that's – you're right. I agree with you about the competition. It just tells me that it sounds like or feels like that Scott Frost is creating that competition and he's willing to do, you know, he's going to hold to his gun and, and set the foundation. So that's, a, for me, a positive. Well, but for me personally, I think he should, I thought he should have done it from, from game one. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm not, you know, you, you know, your know. first year, your first year, if, if knowing what he knows now, how the season's going to pan out, do you think he would have played the guy that he recruited that he oh, saw pitching or well, stuck with the guys who were here last year and then the culture that we built here? Yeah, he wouldn't have played it the way. He would play it totally different. Yeah, he would have been playing the way he's playing now. The, yeah. the best guys, we're we'll, we going to play the guys that we know we can trust. Yeah. We recruit them. So, hindsight is twenty twenty. I mean, you got Warner out there. That's pretty – I mean, it's kind of cool. On one hand, it, it scares me a little when walk-ons are taking the starting role. It's not these me. Day, but in the same sense, I'm like, man, good for that guy. And here's good the reason why. Brandon Riley. Yeah, it's a great well, example. Brandon, he's a walk on. I mean, that's when you had Kenny Bell, yeah. uh, all those guys, yeah, and then right. Stanley Morgan. And, Stanley Morgan. and guess what he did? He went out and competed and earned a job and played and, and got a job and earned a scholarship. So I don't have a problem to walk on stepping up because they're here to play the game too. And and it shows those guys who are on scholarship, hey, you're not here. Hey, if you don't get it done, we're going to play the guys going to get it done. So I don't have a problem with that. Now, we need more guys like Warren. He might not be the most athletic. He might not be the fastest. Yeah. But he's out there, trying, he's out there doing the right things. Is he making plays? Is he, is he, is he helping the team or hurting the team? It's definitely helping. Yeah, so so um, Tasha and Leslie, Greg Bell, take a note from that. I don't know what Kevin Kevin said. Did Mike Grant – was Mike Grant a walk-on? No, Mike was Grant was a scholarship. Scholarship. I don't know. Kevin, I'm sorry. I, I, he, Kevin said Mike Grant started at Nebraska. I don't know what that's referenced to. So I was yeah, Mike to Grant up. was a scholarship. But, but people, Mike Grant was a, was a hell of a quarterback coming out of high school. I watched Mike Grant when I was growing up in high school. He was a hell of a quarterback Yeah, coming out of high school. But, the, but, but there's a perfect example of a guy – who started off and on through his career and could have got very salty and left, but he's a team player. And Where's he can, from? He's from Brandon, Brandon Florida. Oh, was he? Huh. Yeah. And, but he could have very easily left, you know, with Mickey Joseph. He didn't start with Mickey Joseph here. Yeah. He didn't start here when Keith McCann took over. He, I mean, so there's a, and I got here and he's in, he could have very easily been salty, but no, Mike was a consummate team player to where, you know, his job was to do whatever coaches asked him to do. Yeah. And Mike was very instrumental in me learning the offense. And, and to this day, me and Mike, we talk and we're good friends, and we and we have a, we, we hang out when he comes to town recruiting. Yeah, where's he at now? He's at Wyoming, wide receiver coach at Wyoming. Oh wow, yeah, well, good for him. Yeah, so so we got these players these days. Got to get out of their feelings. Got to get their parents out of their ear. Compete. Cause what you're doing? Cause what they, what these two kids show me that you're a quitter. You're quitting on your teammates. And once you quit something one time, you're gonna be always labeled as a quitter. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, no matter what the story is in the media, you know, then it is what it is. Like everybody's going to see it, and he's, that's the label that's going to be there. So, but last night, can, last night, you know, people talk about. Uh, you know, I know we kind of got off the game, but like, even last night, you know, I saw a team that fought. I didn't see anybody quit, but I also saw the same stuff that we've been seeing all, all year. Well, so it comes to a point yeah. in time to when one when, when of these guys will be held accountable for the mistakes because even the guys that they put in there. You're playing a, the new guys are always making the most mistakes. So my only question is, what are we doing in practice when those guys make mistakes? But Kevin said, uh, Mike Grant redshirted in '91 because he didn't want to compete. Oh, uh, so, now he's so, just so, throwing mud, so, yeah, throwing so, mud. So he's throwing mud. So Kevin, <laughs> were, were, you, were you there, or was it, or was he wasn't ready to play? You know, so that's why that's what that's that's why me I try not to comment on stuff that I don't know because I'm not there. I just I try to comment on things based off my experience of when I played the game and when, I, when I, my experience of coaching the game. The few few years I did, you know, so so you never hear me say, "Well, this person didn't didn't compete. He don't want to compete. That's why he's leaving." Yeah. No, I'm saying these guys don't are, are yeah. leaving because they're not competing. Well, a couple of people they asked, have an opportunity to play. A couple of people asked about what do you think about Lamar Jackson now. He seems to be the bit, a lot of rumors stirring around him, and I, I don't know. Any- I don't think Lamar is going anywhere. I think Lamar. You, you, this is a kid who's had what three or four different defensive back coaches. Yeah, uh, it's tough. Yeah. It, it's tough when you go from I think Marvin Sims to Dante to um, to the guy who went to um, LSU to Dante to now. It's tough because every coach 
teaches us something different. You know, now do I think Lamar has the, has the, the talent to be a top corner in this league? Yes. There's something that that's, that's holding them back. I don't know what that is. Just based off watching him, his high school tape, and, and watching him now, I think he's probably one that's probably for me is probably the one most disappointing. Yeah. Off talent and raw ability, and just not getting it to the fullest. But I think he's just junior. So I think he. I think once his senior year coming, the university this year and his senior coming, it'll click. But it, but defensive backs have had the toughest transition I am because they've they've had four different defensive yeah. back coaches in the last three years. That's tough. Yeah. There's nothing more I can say about that. When, yeah. you, have, when you have as much no, coaching, when yeah. you have as much as coaching changes as Nebraska has had over the last seven years, some players love it. Some players adapt to it. Some players don't. Because every coach that comes in here has a different way they teach things. They have a different way to motivate people. And DBs have had it the worst. In my opinion, have had it the worst at all all the positions on the field. Yeah, they have. Well, going back to the list here, people are asking because <coughs> I don't have any follow up on that. <laughs> it's like, you're, 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 I can't argue with that, or even yeah, I agree. Um, cu- a few things people are asking. First of all, people, a lot of people are asking about penalties. What in the world is going on? What is your thoughts about the penalties? It's like the holding calls are crazy. Well, that's once again you got <laughs> once again it's it's a lot of things that fall into place to the holding calls. Guys not knowing what they're doing, and so they're thinking, and they're not reacting fast enough. And then guys in defense, because they might be saying something that they're not used to, or the guy across them is, yeah. is too fast for them, and they're trying to think, make sure they do things the right way instead of going out of plan and get beat. So they grab. That happens, but it's happening way too much. So to me, they're telling me that these guys really don't know what they're doing when it comes to pass protections or when it comes to run blocking schemes. Okay, maybe the system is too much for them right now. So yeah. maybe they need to hone it down. I don't have the answer for that, but once again, I'm just I just what I watch on tape, what I watch on TV, is is my analysis of what's going on. Yeah, and there's I think there's way too much thinking on the field right now than <coughs> reacting, because football is an act react sport, and if you can't go out there and play full speed every play because something is, you're not used to something, then you have too much on your plate. They have too much on their plate. And so you get those holding penalties. You get you you get you get. And me, to me, sometimes holding is good. But the type of holding penalties that I saw last night, you you just got guys getting outworked. That's what it looked like to me, at least on the especially on the offense. You got guys being outworked. You got guys who are late to the party because they weren't sure if they supposed to do this or not. That's what I saw last night, and and and, and it hurt Nebraska, and it's gonna continue hurting Nebraska. <laughs> And we, when we sit here and, and, and every week they keep talking about penalties, 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 penalties. Are we going to be talking about penalties for the rest of the year? We talked about penalties last year. We talked about penalties two years ago. Are we going to continue? Are we going to continue be talking about penalties? It's like practice. Are we sitting here talking about practice? It's where okay. we get our most of our yards. So if we're going to keep the, so do something yeah. in practice and make it, make it a, a consequence. I still go back to Coach Osborne. Anytime someone jumped offside, they had to run a lap. Anytime somebody fumbled the ball, had to run a lap. Anytime throw an interception, had to run a stadium step. There's a consequence for your mistake to when you. There's a consequence for your mistake. And I don't think that's what's going on. And I'm not down there, but it continues to happen. So there's there's there's, there's it's, it's 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 it goes back to those saying, when you do something wrong, you're gonna get punished for it. What is the punishment for jumping off sides? What is the punishment for yeah. holding? What is the punishment for throwing an interception? And I know not every interception is on the Could it just be these guys are just not as talented or not as physical and they're desperate out there well, just we, holding on for life well, trying to – That could be part of it. That, try, could, that could be part of it. They're learning a new system. They're trying to throw so much of the system. Well, it seems like on the offense, when we got a few calls on the on the offensive line. They're holding, holding. And they're just desperate, it seems like, to protect Martinez. Because and they're, they're not outworked sure. And because they're, they're getting outworked and not sure. No, I'm not saying that they're, they're, they're not talented. They're, they're, yeah, that's not a fair they're, word. They're, but they're they're probably just facing guys who are more talented yeah, than them. Just bigger, more physical. Big, well, maybe and, not even bigger, but fit, more and, physical. And you have or, guys who probably know their system better. Is is how I see it. But I think we got some talented guys. I don't think we have enough talented guys up front. I think we have a lot of individual guys who will have the want. But when you when they have to do it as a collective unit, they can't do it. They're not doing it. 
whole bunch of people also. Steve just asked it, but there was a bunch, of, you know, a bunch of people asked this earlier. Just your thoughts about uh, Zigbo last night? What in the world? I don't think he was part of the game plan. Yeah. I really don't, because <laughs> because when you when you look at when you look at the things that that they were running, it was more. I think to me, it looked like they was trying to run more the quarterback, more trying to get outside, get outside gaps. Like Zigbo is not an outside runner. He's a straight down the hill guy. And late in the game, he had some runs that was down the hill where he gained six, seven yards. So you can, so I don't. He he had some good runs the, the previous week versus Purdue because I don't think Purdue is a world beater either. But when you face a team like Wisconsin, you got to hit them in the mouth. Just like just like Wisconsin hit Nebraska in the mouth. How many how many outside run plays did you see Wisconsin run last night? I can't even think of one. I'm sure they did. They ran they, they ran in between the tiger probably eighty five percent of the time. Yeah. Why? Because they knew we're gonna line up and hit him in the mouth, see if they can stop us. And guess what? We couldn't. Zippo had five carries. That's it. The, exactly. So uh, I don't carries. think he I don't think he was part of the game plan this week. I think Mo Washington, they felt Mo Washington gave him the best. He had five carries too. And how many did the quarterback have? Thirteen. So they threw the ball more, they threw the ball more than they ran it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, what game plan are you going to do? Who is your back? What are you trying to feature? If it's Zebo, then give it to him. He can handle it. He, I mean, he's a big guy. He can handle it. And then sprinkle in some Maurice Washington. But if it's Maurice Washington, give it to him. And then sprinkling Zebo coming downhill. And, and I know they're going to say, well, with Kenny Bell, with, um, is, it, is it Kenny Bell or Bell, whatever his name is? I know it's Bell. The yeah. Bell. With him, uh, Greg Bell. See, I, I forgot. It might be great. It might be great. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's how. That's how. It he, be great, he, that's though. why he's in my fourth thought. I don't want people saying, "Well, he left the team, so they put Nebraska in a, in a country of how they gonna run it." No, no, it didn't. no, no, it didn't because he won. He was he wasn't he was a third running back. Yeah, he fell. He fell in the depths. So now here's now. So here's my thing now. Now it's time for Will Bond to step up. Now it's time for Jalen Bradley to step up. Yeah, where those the guys? Opp- the opportunity is there for those guys to step up and prove that they Jalen Bradley. Here's your opportunity. I know everybody in Omaha said, how come he's not playing much? How come he's not playing much? Yeah. Now it's his time to go out there and prove it that he's, he's fully playing. Yeah. But he's yeah. a sophomore, right? True sophomore. True sophomore. Will Bond. Will Bond's senior. Is he a senior? Yeah, Ziggy Bowl's a senior. <laughs> so, oh, you're right. You're right. So, so yeah, now, yeah. come on. Come on, Jalen Bradley. I, I think you, you – know, well, I saw you doing high school at Bellevue West. Yeah. I think you have the ability to do it. Well, how come you're not doing it now? How come you're not on the field? There's something going on. Come on. See, that's, see, there's talent there. Yeah. They're just not competing to the highest level to earn the trust of those coaches. I say it time again, time again. There's no coach who's gonna lose, who wants to lose game with the best player sitting on the sideline. No yeah. coach. But you can't put a player out there on the field if they're not knowing what they're doing. Because this is a man's game. Yeah. And you can get, and you can get your, you know what, knock stiff if you're not playing a man, playing it the way a man's supposed to be playing it. Well, but but people but people are skirting around the most important issue Uh-oh. of last night, and, I, and for me it's not offense. I, offense, offense, what it is? It's the, yeah. How come I don't hit an outcry about the defense? I actually seen people um, as I'm reading this. I seen people posting that they thought the defense was better last what? night. What? I actually seen that. A couple, people said there was. They thought that's where they saw the improvement. What? Excuse my friends. What the hell were they looking at? <laughs> that's what. How do you stay on the field for the first seven and a half minutes, eight minutes of the game? Yeah. I thought Wisconsin took a light on them last night. I thought so, too. I thought they could have turned it up if, if they wanted if to. If Wisconsin would just set up and say, you know, we don't have to throw the ball not one time. We're just going to run the ball down and yeah. throw the game with a guy out of control. Yeah. Wisconsin tried. They got their passing game. They did some passing stuff because they playing against Michigan. They know that Michigan have a very stout run defense. So they got those bring some passes in. But what are the people looking at? Yeah, I don't even know where those comments came from. It Once was, again, more victory. Oh, got turned over here. How many times was did Nebraska get him off the field three and out? Well, the stats would tell us, but I, I you're mean, right. Quite a few. A lot. How many yards per rush did Wisconsin have? Average. That's what I was just looking at. Well, so they played Taylor better? was nine point two a run. So they played better. Deal was seven point four an average. How do, how do, how's it playing better when Nebraska comes out and uh, come out at halftime halftime and th- does a seventy five yard bomb, make the score twenty to ten, and then the next drive Wisconsin line up and drive the ball right down their throat? How's that better? They had four running backs that averaged per carry 
Eight yards probably. Well, more than what we did per carry. So that's what I'm getting at. So what are people looking at when they say they got better? Three of them were above seven yards of carry. Like, when it got wow. better. I don't see it. Three I didn't here. see it. 370 yards rushing. So for those people who are saying, well, they say, oh, they saw the Browns defense. No, you saw spurts of them getting better. You saw people like Khalil Davis making a, making a, a, a running a running back down. Yes, F. You saw F. But when it comes to the big picture, you say they got better? Well, now everybody said. Are you serious? Now you're seeing it. Defense is horrible, Kevin said. <laughs> Todd said no tackling. Steve said the defense was awful. But, Bob says the Badgers could have scored 100 points on us if they really pushed it. The defense, Steve said the defense has not played. Oh, I lost the comment. Has not played since Colorado. I mean, now, yeah, now everybody's. You know, but there was a couple of comments earlier about the a positive side of the. They thought that was the shining side of the football. No. no they, did it make some plays? Yes. No, what we've seen from the offense yesterday, I felt like, is the same thing we've seen all year. They run between. Yes. Running around the middle of the field, they can't execute oh, in the red zone. That's what, that, 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 that. There was no pass but, but, rush but, on but, the but, but, but here, here, and I'm gonna say it, people. This is the same defensive staff, okay? And 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 take it for however you want to take it. When they were at Central Florida last year, how many points did they give up a game? Ooh. And this and this and then this is the same program that went undefeated, and the same and then they say, well, we have better athletes at Central Florida than we have in Nebraska. Yeah. And they still gave up what 30, 40 points a game. Central Florida had outscore a lot of people yeah. to win those games. So my point to you is that don't blame the players here because it's the same defense staff that gave up a lot of points at Central Florida. And they didn't play as many as good teams as they're going to face in the Big Ten. Yeah. So, so people don't want to say that. But I'm going to say it. And I know it's the first year. I get it. I get it. But you still should be seeing improvement on both sides of the ball. Nebraska's beating themselves with, with the person um, in pass interference penalties. <coughs> okay? Somebody got to say it. So that's why Nebraska's 0-5 because they're beating themselves. That's why Nebraska's 0-5 because the, the players aren't truly adapting to what these coaches are coaching. I'm not saying these coaches are wrong for what they're doing, but the players aren't adapting to it. So if the players aren't adapting to your style of coaching or your system you're coaching, then dummy it down so where they can pick it up, so where they can go out and play and have fun. This team is not having fun. No, they're definitely not. They're, on, they're, they're, they're ice skating right now. They're afraid to make a mistake. They're afraid to play. They're trying to be perfect. Football is not being perfect. It's about putting yourself in a position to make a play. Well, was it last week we had the players on the sideline that were dancing around? They kept showing. Yeah, they're down. They're losing by 14 points now. They're dancing around. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that, but like last night, you're down 17 points. Mo Bear makes a play and gets up, starts celebrating because he made a good play. What you're down? You're down 17 points. Yeah. There's no time to celebrate. You made a good hit, or Aaron, well, Aaron Williams hits a guy, starts to, like he blows the guys up, and you can tell he was getting ready to celebrate. The guy bounced up and kept going. Oh, that Come on. Yeah, was that Williams? I think it was number 25. Or Reed, yeah, whoever it, the, I thought it was Reed. Reed yeah, 25. The safety. The safety. That was ridiculous. That's my point. That was ridiculous because he was totally walking away to celebrate. Yes, he that's thought my he, point. Yeah. But you're down by 17 points. You celebrate now. Come on, people. This is it's, defense did not is not looking better. Mike asked if you were if you were running the defense, would you call more blitz or just stay with the three four man rush? First of all, I'm not a big three four guy. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you said that. I've been upset, and people say, "Why come you not a three four guy?" Because that extra lineman, well, you don't have big linebackers. Yeah, the four the four linemen. Keeps a lot of the guys off you and let your linebackers roam more. 3 4 is you give an extra gas for the linemen get to linebackers. Yes. That's why I'm not a 3 4 guy. Versus Wisconsin last night, and the guy asked me if I was a coach, I would have ran blitz the whole time. I would have ran blitz the whole game and forced them to, if they, they're going to beat us, they blitz because we blitz. Yeah. They beat us because we blitzed it. But don't sit back and knowing that they're coming downhill and they're just going to blow you off the ball. I'm going to run blitz, run blitz, run blitz. And that way, so we lost. Well, guess what? We blitz 90% of the time. Yeah. They caught us. But what if you catch them? How many times did West Coast blitz us? Quite more than we blitz them. Yeah. So that's, how, that's, that's, that would have been my philosophy. And I've seen a lot of coaches who do it that way. You know, watch Michigan. Watch Ohio State when they play West Coast. They're not going to sit back and let them go down here to tee it up. And they're they, they going to blitz to run. Force, force that quarterback to beat us in the passing game. Because we, we all said it. 
he's not a superstar when it comes to throwing the football. Yeah. So take away their stream, they're forcing the beat, the forcing. If they beat us throwing the ball, then they beat us. Yeah. But they didn't beat us run uh, running for three hundred seventy yards. So run blitz. That's what I would have done. But hindsight twenty twenty. Yeah, it is. What did the I think total Nebraska? What was I say? Total yards. Nebraska still put up what five hundred yards? Yeah, five hundred yards. It's kind was, of interesting. I don't. And I, and I, I listen to commentators say, "Well, Nebraska again put up five hundred yards. There's enough yards. No, it's not enough yards. When you, when you, when you well, okay, every time you get a penalty, <laughs> right? Yeah, they, 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 they add those yards back to it. What? Yeah, and that's what I say. The yeah, last night at the end of the game, that was the one thing everybody I kept hearing as a positive note. Look, the rest put up five hundred yards, but you still lost the game. Uh, it's the moral victory thing again, right? So but, you have moral victories. You still had how many turnovers by your quarterback? And they should have had more than that. They dropped three interceptions. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they dropped a few. So, so all these moral victories and five hundred yards. Well, guess what? You should have five hundred yards because they played their second and third string for the last last quarter and a half. But what, 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 you, you started the game off hot, but then you got away from the things that you did well early. Steve said, is that what they did versus Colorado? Blitz a lot, most of the game. They blitz more versus Colorado. I don't remember, actually. But I, I, they, they blitz yeah. more. The first game, they blitz more the first game. Rob said last night they only threw to one wide receiver in the tight end. Well, that's, that's what, what <laughs> so it, it worked. Wait a minute, time out. Does that sound familiar back in the 80s and 90s with, 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 with Nebraska? We didn't throw to the wide as much. The tight end had more, yeah. more touchdown catches than the wide receivers did. Yeah. You're right. That's part of the form because people don't really cover you. You got a tight end on a linebacker. You expect for your linebacker to tight end to win that battle most of the time. And we have an athletic mobile tight end. Wow. Who caught one of our touchdowns last night? The tight end. Yeah. We haven't seen the tight end as much. But in supposed, recent years, but, 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 but I'll tell you, tight ends. They look at the NFL. Yeah, they look at the NFL. If you got look at look at New England Patriots, a perfect example. Um, when when um Antonio Gates at the Chargers was yeah. a perfect example. Um, Tony Gonzalez, Jimmy Graham. When you when you uh, even Nas Paul and the Redskins when they when you got a tight end who can stretch the field, and and, and like it becomes another receiver that opens your offense up. It makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Now you can't blitz. Yeah, you can't. I watched I watched Wisconsin last night and it was a simple the tight end did a simple ten yard out route and was wide open. Called it and gained fifteen yards off of it. It, it, it was not like he it was like it wasn't play action. The quarterback dropped back, tight end did a ten yard out route, wide open. Who's who's guarding him? Young. That's why tight ends are important. Yeah. They are. I'm just sorry that we need to get our tight ends more well, involved. You see, they played their tight ends. They played the fullback. Played the fullback. They're playing. They're playing. But that's a different style of offense. But in a yeah. spread offense, you still can play the tight end. Yeah. You can flex them out. You can bring them in. You can do a lot of things with them. Get in the ball because it's just it's, it forces team to be accountable for him. Yeah. We had a t- our tight end caught one ball last night. He caught a touchdown. Stole. So he caught, yeah. I think it was stole. I think that's how stole, yeah. Him. Uh, Matt says, going back to the running backs, and he just says, I just don't understand why why Zigbo had two carries and the quarterback's total had 10 carries for the whole game. What in the world possibly could have been the game plan to support this? You tell, you, 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 now that's why you need to call Coach Frost and ask him. Because yeah. I, I was, when I found out, he, when I was looking at the game and, the, and he only had two carries, I'm like, this is a guy who just had 170 yards, 17 carries a week before. Yeah. You're saying he's playing better than any other running back and he only comes in with two carries? Versus a team that you know is going to line up. He, this is a perfect game to just feed him the ball. Slow the game down. That's what I thought. Keep the Pete, clock slow, running. Yeah. Yeah. Slow the game down. Yeah. But they didn't do it. And I understand this is spread system. Hurry up offense. This is a system. Sometimes you got to swallow your pride and say, you know what? They're better than us. So we just got to go out here and keep it close to the fourth quarter and give ourselves a chance. And you never know. Hey, Jeff asked a fun question. An easier question, a little more relaxing, <laughs> like not a lot. He says, how bad would the 95 Huskers have beat Wisconsin last night? I don't do hypotheticals. I know you wouldn't even answer. See, I already knew that you were. I, I do hypotheticals, but it would have been bad. <laughs> I almost didn't ask you because I knew just as I read it multiple times, I'm like, he's not even going to answer this. And, you know, I don't do hypotheticals, but I just know 95, they're not very many. I don't think there's any team within the last 15 years that will beat, beat that 95 team. The, yeah. I don't. I think there might have been some teams that probably played as close. 
But I don't think there's been any team in yeah. the last 15 years to beat us. There you go. And I know people saying, well, what about the Alabama, the Alabamas Alabama. and, and what about the, 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 the USC team or what about the, the Texas team? And the, the people, they, 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 they were all flashy. They, 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 they didn't, they didn't, the only one that probably was Alabama. I, honestly, because they would line them up and go down your throat too. Yeah. It would have been a smash, old time, smash mouth football type game. But I think, I think, uh, I think our, our, our defense would have, would have held God. up. Well, I mean, people forget how much hype was around Florida that year too. Yeah. Like they, I mean, they were a powerhouse. They picked us to lose that game. Yeah. They were a powerhouse. And we just lined them and hit them in the mouth. And that's what you got to do to a bully. Hit them in the mouth. <laughs> Because well, right. I promise you, once you once you a bully, 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 once you hit a bully back, he's gonna leave you alone. All right, Kevin said, name one player on defense who would have been on the field ninety two through ninety. None of them. None of them. None of them. What are we talking about? I don't even know where that question's going. What he's saying that uh, on defense today, <clears throat> coming every year, yeah. which one of those teams? Which one? Any player on defense could could have played. For nine, between oh, 92 and I got defense. you. I got you. All right, great question, Kevin. Actually, I read into that wrong. No, no, yeah, but that's not the question to ask. Well, I think that's the same thing with the, when we talk about the running back game. Yeah, but, but and... that's not the question to ask. The question to ask is how many of those guys would have been playing for Bo Pelini when when, when when that's when the last time Nebraska had a good defense. Yeah, mm-hmm. how many of the guys on the field would have been playing for Bo? Mm-hmm. That's what that's what you compare it to because that's because that's Ooh. where the bar is right now. Bo Pelini's yeah. years. That's, dude, that's a great question. Am I, am I correct? Question. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, Bo Pelini had some studs. That's as what much a bar as crazy is. It was. That's what a bar. You said don't, don't go back to ninety two, ninety five. Go back to when Bo Pelini was here, and he had a good deal with the uh, Dominican Sues and the Demario Williams and those guys that the um, the, 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 the Denars. And, it's hard yeah. to. Uh, How many of these guys on this team defense right now could have could have played for Bo? Who's the guy who went to Tampa? And I'm not even saying starting. Um, you, um, Levante David. Oh, thank you. David. Uh, and I'm not even talking about guys yeah, yeah. who would have started. Yeah. I'm just talking about guys who have been in part of top two. So so people don't go back to 92, 95 because <sighs> there's, 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 nobody, there's nobody on this team that would have been. I can't think team. of anybody on this team that would play for that back then. But, but now you can say since, wow. since, Bo, since, well, since Bo Pelini when Nebraska was winning nine games a year, which is for me right now nine games a threshold, which should be a threshold. Yeah. How many of these kids could have played for both? I can't see it on the yeah. on the defensive so side. So that's the I question. That's see the it. question to ask. Yeah. That's the question to ask. Because even because even if you go even if you go back to two thousand, do you think Eric Crouch would have played on on, on those nine two ninety five teams? No. He wouldn't. Have. No. And, and, and and Eric is a Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. It's, yeah. Eric's a Heisman Trophy winner, and that's not been a knock on him, but no, it, just, it was just the depth and the talent that different we had. Team then. Different yeah. team. And you talking about yeah. a Heisman Trophy winner from nine two ninety five? Do you think he would have played? Do you do people? Do you honestly believe that, that, that Eric Crouch was a better football player than Brooke Barringer? No, I. And it's just a question. Everyone, yeah. everyone gonna have their opinion. Yeah, everybody. Has. I, I, I mean, I struggle. That I don't. Want, it's hard to you know. I don't. I say no, but it's hard to say. Like I don't want to be disrespectful either. Not, Trophy, like I love that. I love that. Idea. But it's but not being disrespectful he was, to any other player. No, no, no you're right. He would. I don't think he would. He would have. I don't think he would have beat out you or Brooke by any means. But he was thinking to beat out Scott, and when, when Scott came in, I don't know. That, see, the problem I look at those teams. I just think there's a different team. Like you had exactly. You you had different talent around you than he did. Exactly. That's, so that's why when people say could this player play, but no. Because my ten, the talent level right then, yeah, it was at the that was the best. I mean, from ninety from where I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to say from 1989 to probably 97. Coach Osmond last years were the best years when you talk about talent in Coach Osborne's whole career. Yeah, that 92, no, let's say the 80, what I'm say 88, 89 to 97 was the best years. And I'm gonna go go even a little farther when you go go to 1999 because those were Coach Osborne's last recruiting players. Yeah. That those between that gap there was the best years of talent that Nebraska has ever had, collectively on a more consistent basis. Think about it. Yeah. Now, if you look at these players, this roster now, how many of those guys could have played within that time frame? Well, Kevin, which is just consuming the chat today in a good way, says Spillman and Morgan are the two that he thinks could have played back then. I don't think so. 
Well, let me tell you what. Maybe Morgan. Maybe Morgan. Morgan. Maybe Morgan. Maybe Morgan. But, you know, I say that because you say the style of offense that we're running now. Yeah. I'm talking about the offense that we ran back yeah. then. Because if you say that, then Corey Dixon could have, could have, could have, we ran the same, as Corey Dixon could have been a thousand yard receiver. Yeah. Okay. Abdul Muhammad could have been a thousand yard receiver. Dana Brent could have been a thousand yard receiver. Um, Johnny, um, Johnny Mitchell could have been a thousand yard, thousand yard receiver. If we, if they, if the spread offense, and that's what Nebraska did. Cause cool. Nebraska has always had, Urban Fry could have, what yeah. I'm, what I'm getting at, based off the talent as a collective unit. Yeah. How many of those guys would have been playing? And, 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 and what would have hurt Stanley Morgan? He's not a very good blocker. Which that was what, 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 you you had to block. Yeah, clear the field. Yeah, downfield. You, you, yeah, you, you got to do your job too. And I saw and I, and I see times when he don't touch a guy, he turn, didn't touch the guy. Yeah, this is this receiver group is not a very good receiver blocking group. They they, they want to catch the ball first, and then Coach Osborne, no, you, you want the ball thrown to you, you got to block. Yeah. Well, now you got all type of hypothetical things going on. Hypos. Uh, <laughs> we got hypos, but people forgetting about the game last night because they understand the statement I made that this team is not. There, they, there's, there, there, there's some flashes. Don't get me wrong. There's some flashes, but there's a reason why they're zero five. Yeah. And how many people think they're gonna win the game this week? Mm. Mm. What? Uh, you, huh? Who won the score? I didn't see the final of the game for this Northwestern week. Northwestern won twenty four nine twenty nine fourteen twenty nine. 19 or something like that. I say, I seen, I watched, I was following the first half of the game. They were up, they were, they were up mm-hmm. 19 14, Michigan State, and then Northwestern scored 20, 29 15. We're going points. to Chicago. And we're going to Chicago. Who who won the game last year? Here. We did. Nebraska beat Northwestern last year? Didn't we win it? Like, you sure about that? Last second? <laughs> that was a couple years ago <laughs> on the Hail Mary. Three years ago. I thought we just. That, that was Ron Kellogg. No, that was Ron Kellogg. I thought yeah. we just. Didn't we win it last year? You think, hey, we, you think we won last year? People in the chat, tell me who won last year. I thought we won by one point. You think? I think. But okay. I could I could be wrong. I thought last year we won by one point. Okay. All right, well. Either I, way. Because I know Nebraska beat them out there the year before. Beat, beat them in. in uh, they could have been that too. But I think last year, the Northwestern won last year. Somebody tell us. Tom said Northwestern will smash us. <laughs> smash us. <laughs> Uh, did we win last year? Mm. I don't know if we did or didn't, but I'm, I'm thinking we didn't. Northwestern won 31-24. See? All right, so my years are off. Every year they've played, they've, either they, beat, they, they've been they, right they played, there. Or, Nebraska beat them out, and I still remember two years ago when Tommy Armstrong and Nebraska beat them in, 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 in Northwestern. Yeah. I remember that game, and but then the Northwestern beat them two years before that. So what I'm getting at, people. Oh, Tyler said they ran it in the overtime. That's what it was. Yeah, they won in overtime. All right, thanks. So, so this is not I'm wrong. This, this is not a shoe-in game, and nah, especially no, them, definitely not. After them playing Michigan as tough as they did, and then beat Michigan State on the road, who think who do you think has the confidence? Now, I'm not saying Nebraska doesn't have a chance because it's not like Northwest is a world beater. Mm. When you talk about confidence right now, and based off the last game they played, who do you give the favor to? I can't imagine other than Bartholomew Cookdom or whatever that school is. I can't. Well, soon Cookman. I struggle to see Nebraska being favored in any game going forward. Maybe Illinois, and I even struggle with that one. If, if Nebraska's favored in any game, then something, then the odds, then you then put all your money on the other team. All with the exception of Bethune Cookman. Yeah. That's, over, over the last five years, how many times have Nebraska been favored to cover? Uh, they haven't. I don't. I can't even think of a game. They haven't. So if Nebraska's favorite, mm-hmm. you put your money. You put your money on another team because they haven't covered when they've been favored. We lose by seventeen. Todd says. Or people are giving predictions. They're giving predictions already. It's hard. It, it, and and it's it's tough when you when you when you you having these debates and conversations about Nebraska football at the state it is right now. Yeah. It's tough because we all want to see them do well. I want to see Nebraska win just as much as anyone out there. But I'm also a realist. I'm not a homer. I base it off what I see. I watch a lot of college football. Yeah. I watch a lot of college football because I have to because I do a lot, a lot of bunch of stuff for, for the College Football Foundation and the NFL. Fo- and so they ask me to critique games. And, and, when, and, when, I, and when, I, when I critique games, I'm critiquing what I see, the abilities, the talent, and what I see, production. And Nebraska right now, if they're favored in any game but one, something's wrong. 
Put your money on the team. On that note, we're running on to an hour. Run to an hour. I want to talk about this UFC on. fight, though. Man, run to wait, before. But, but before we get there, though, but, I, but I, here's what I want to see this week. Yeah, from Nebraska, a team that goes out there and play hard. Yeah, of course. Supposed, compete. Supposed to compete. Yeah, supposed to. Yeah, but cut down those penalties from maybe the 10, 11 to five or six. If they do that, then they'll give themselves a great chance to win the game because penalties are what's killing this team. I don't remember how many. Because they're averaging 10, 11, 12 penalties a game. Yeah. So if you can cut that, and most of the times, for instance, think about the long pass play. Ugh. It was offsetting it um, to um, most, Mo Washington on the sideline. Yeah. But guess what? It was another penalty on Nebraska that offset that penalty. Or what about the long kickoff run? The kickoff return. I mean, you, yeah. you got a guy blocking in the back. Yeah. Which, once again, now Nebraska's back on their five-yard line. Yep. So if you can cut half of those penalties out, last night probably would have been a little bit different. I'm not saying they would have won it, but it probably been a little bit more interesting. So that's so that's my goal. They're going to play hard. I don't I don't doubt that. They're going to play with emotions. I don't doubt that. Yeah. But you got to stop beating yourselves. So if you can cut you can cut those ten to twelve penalties down to five to six, you give yourself a better chance to win the game. Because you're still averaging five hundred yards of offense. Yeah, they're putting up some yards. You're putting up yards, but you move the ball and you get a penalty, then it puts you behind. So you go from so you you're driving you're on the thirty yard line. Yeah. And you get a holding penalty. Instead of being first and first and ten or second and three, now you're first and twenty from the forty yard line. And then you give up a sack. Okay, then you do another good play, then you have another holding. So now you're th- now you're third and seventeen. There's not many plays in a playbook for 30 17s. I think we had at least one, 30 and 27, if not a couple. Yeah. So so that's why I'm saying you cut those penalties down, you probably could have got field goals. Points on the board is as good as nothing. Yeah. On the shiny, well, I thought the fact that Wisconsin, the first quarter, we held them to three points. Why? I was. Because Wisconsin didn't want to go out and embarrass them. I, I, I'm going to tell you, I truly, they, saw, I truly saw the game as Nebraska, the, the Wisconsin said, we're going to go out here and nickel and dime. We're gonna run, they know we're going we're gonna to run the ball. We're going to pound the ball inside and see if they can stop yeah. it. And, and they, they, I mean, that drive and just they kept just, going. That just kind of, they couldn't stop it. The drive just kept going. Wear them and down. And then mm-hmm. once Nebraska came out and then Nebraska said, okay, now let's really put it to them. And that's when he shot, boom, boom, boom. And then after Nebraska came back out of halftime and scored that, 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 that quick touchdown, what did Wisconsin do? Answered. Okay, here we go. Boom. Yep. And Nebraska didn't know how to respond. And they came back, boom. And Nebraska didn't know how to respond. So if West Coast really wanted to embarrass Nebraska last night, yeah. they could have. They really could because they did, they did it two years ago. And yep. they did last year in Lincoln when they go to 14-14 at halftime. And what happened? What was the final score? 57-14? to 14? Yeah, they, they've punished us year after yeah. year. They've punished so us. So I thought West Coast was being generous last night. They did well enough to, to show, hey, we're still a good part, but we don't want to embarrass Nebraska. Yeah. If I'm, if, I'm if, if if anybody saw anything different than that, feel free to let me know. But the defense is better? No, they're not. No, they're not. All right. I don't know what you mean, Jeff, by did we watch the game? I don't know who you're talking to. No, the question is, did you watch the game? <laughs> 